Hello to the presentation from ITEC about the, the quantification of the uh, scale of global barnacle fouling on the merchant fleet. As, um, I'm very pleased uh, to be here. I'm sorry I can't be in person, but uh, so we will try to do this uh, presentation uh, on a recorded day. ITEC, uh, who are we? We are a small Swedish biotech company, small but global. Um, we are the inventor of uh, Selectope, which is a barnacle repelling active agent, which I will explain later on shortly. We supply locally to paint um, manufacturers um, in, in the marine market. And at the moment, there are more than nine commercial available antifouling products available containing Selectope in, in the paint. We are listed on uh, Nasdaq First North since uh, 2018. Um, and there are several hundreds of vessels coated already with our technology and all type of uh, vessel types. And of course, we have an extensive uh, uh, project ongoing and uh, it's protected by patents. I will not talk a lot about the marine farming process. I think in, in this forum, it has been uh, discussed several times, just as, as a short reminder. Um, it starts with the absorption of, of organic matter, you have the first colonizers, second colonizers, and finally you, you get to macroscopic fouling or hard fouling, which has, has a shell. And I will mainly talk today on barnacle fouling, which is normally uh, in this category. Uh, that, that's how barnacles look. I thought, and I believe most of you unfortunately have seen them uh, on, on vessels. Um, here you have some pictures uh, from how uh, heavy barnacle can uh, can look. And this, yeah, no need to repeat it, but everybody knows it. The famous study from uh, Schulz from the Office of Naval Research, where you can see that 10% of barnacle covered over his 36% uh, effect on the shaft power, of course, depending on, on the vessel type you have. Um, so here you can already see that uh, a small amount of barnacle fouling already has a huge impact on, uh, on shaft power and, and the consequence on fuel consumption. Why is there so much focus on biofouling? Um, as I said before, it's, uh, it's, uh, there's a huge uh, pressure nowadays to reduce fuel, fuel bills and uh, carbon dioxide emissions, um, especially now with the uh, COVID-19 uh, situation. Everybody has to save money. Um, and estimations say that 10 to 15 billion US dollars could be saved if uh, shipping companies would move to the best fouling uh, control uh, systems. Um, as a consequence, uh, of course, the carbon dioxide uh, emissions will be, would be saved, um, and especially with the uh, carbon zero uh, scope of uh, 2050s. And being more and more in the uh, discussions is the, the reduction of invasive species. Um, there has been since several years uh, the IMO active on, uh, on, on biofouling management and more and more it becomes clear that the hull is uh, one of the key vectors for, uh, for antifouling, uh, for fouling, yeah, for invasive species movement. So this is a selector in a nutshell. This is a, a vessel um, which was in uh, Tokyo Bay. The area test patch where Selectope was in the paint, and you can see here an area of paint where Selectope was not uh, included. And um, it gives you uh, an insurance to keep your hull free of barnacles. That's how barnacle larvae uh, looks like on the microscope. This is the, the molecular uh, structure of uh, selectope or metamidine, as it's called chemically, um, as an active agent. Um, the different approach to, to other biocytes is uh, it's very selective. It binds to a specific, a specific uh, receptor in the, in, in, in the barnacle larvae, um, and then it triggers uh, the swimming behavior, meaning so the larvae before sitting down, here you see the legs, uh, she uh, swim, swims around. And when, when she gets in contact with Selectope, uh, they become very active and they, they are uh, too active to settle down. Um, so the speed of picking uh, becomes very fast. It has the European Union uh, and, and most uh, global marine um, 
market. Um, there is no bioaccumulation, meaning um, it's not killing the uh, barnacle, um, so there will be no resistance, um, which is good, and it's not accumulation over time in, in the organism. So to go back to the working mechanism a little bit more in detail, so we have the adult barnacle, for example, here on the propeller. Um, these barnacles, they release uh, the, uh, the larvae, the different states, stages of larvae, so first you have the nautri larvae, this one is, is, is eating and growing, and then after some time it converts to this cyclic larvae, which I, I showed you a picture before. And this one then is swimming around and trying to find a place to settle down, to glue on the surface, and then uh, to grow to become an adult barnacle. And what Senecope does exactly in this step from the cyclic larvae, when, she, when they want to settle down, they, um, um, they bind to the receptor, they start swimming very active, the kicking of the legs becomes faster, and so they can't settle down. But it's not lethal. After two, two three hours, uh, the selectope is digested and, and the larvae go back to normal mode and they can settle down on, on other areas. As a positive side effect, as I mentioned before, it's not toxic, it's not killing the larvae, and so no selection process can happen, so there will be no uh, resistance. They cannot become immune against the selectope in a simple way of talking. Yeah, another um, property of selectope is uh, it's, it's very active, so you need very little. <clears throat> if you compare, for example, uh, different paint uh, formulations, biocide A, you have around 800, 750 grams of this uh, biocide in one liter of paint. Uh, so if B, because hard fouling, you have around 100 gram of, of, of this biocide in, in, in the coating. And for selectope, you have around 1.6 grams of um, of selectope in a paint. So it's a it's a very active uh, ingredient. You need only about around 0.1%. Um, as I said, it, it's uh, degraded and it's so far only used in self polishing and defoulings. And not has, it has not been used so far in uh, fouling release systems. So technically that's uh, that's possible. So now I can start with the uh, the research which I, I'm going to present. Um, ITEC, we contracted uh, Safina, uh, which is an independent uh, consulting group for uh, coding and uh, coding engineering, uh, located in, uh, in Newcastle, New York Kingdom. What they did, or what they do, they uh, attend dockings, in dockings, and, and uh, give also um, advice for uh, the application. So they have uh, they have at the moment a database of 49 vessels uh, with write-up reports um, with an extensive um, data elaboration of the quality of the incoming situation of the vessel, what type of fouling, uh, sensor fouling and so on. And on this 249 vessels, they had 572 observations of uh, fouling. Um, and this was done with docking from 2015 to 2019. So this database from Safina constantly keeps on growing as they keep on uh, attending uh, dockings. So on a very general uh, level, they have, have seen that on 44% of the vessels, um, there was more than 10% of the underwater hull covered with barnacles. So here are ranges, 0 to 10%, 10 to 20%, and so on. And 12 vessels out of uh, the full uh, number, there was less than 10% of the hull covered with barnacles. And you see 44% had more than 10% uh, covered. So, so there's a significant amount of hard fouling, barnacle fouling on, uh, on general on, on the hulls. What uh, location? Um, so you can see here B team is boot top, vertical sides, flat bottom and sea chest. Uh, different types of, uh, of, of, of fouling. Um, you can see that in the sea chests, more than 90% of the sea chests have had animal fouling. And you can see on, on the boot top, which is generally has less fouling as it's part of the time out of, of the water, only 20% had only slimes and, and, and weed, and more than around 80% had have, uh, some type of animal fouling. For the flat
is not exposed too much to, to light normally. You can see that it's less algae and slime, but still um, yeah, around 85% uh, of them have had um, heart falling. Again, on, on the location, we have the boot top, the vertical sides, and the flat bottom. So less than 10% or 86% of the boot top have less than 10%. Probably those are the vessels which uh, have more time with the boot top out of water, like, like tankers. Um, the vertical sides, only 67% um, have less than 10%. So you can see you get a significant amount of fouling. And between 10 and 20 percent, it's 12 percent of uh, the vessels, um, the, the vertical sites uh, covered, and 20 percent have more than 20 percent of, of, of animal fouling on the vertical sites. The situation looks even worse if we go to the flat bottom, uh, where 32 percent have more than 20 percent fouling area um, on the flat bottom. So. The fouling is, is quite significant also on the flat bottom, which can be a very high uh, area depending on the vessel type, especially if you look on tankers, which is more a box form. Uh, um, this has a significant contribution to, to the hull performance. If we compare activity, um, lower activity, so um, Safina also compared the activity of, of, of the vessel, um, of course, those relative. The, the lower activity vessels, um, you can see only 55% have less than 10%. On the higher activity vessels, 73% have less than 10% of fouling on, uh, on the surface. So this again proves that the less active a vessel is, uh, the higher is the challenge for, for the fouling. Um, yeah. And also, maybe as a side comment, so barnacle larvae only can settle if, if, uh, if the vessel the speed is lower than, uh, than six knots. If you look on the type of um, biocidal antifouling rates, um, it's not a surprise. Um, if you go from for high grade, it's around 10% of on average of the, of the surface is, uh, or 12% is covered with uh, half, half fouling. If you go to um, low grade, it's around 30%, and for the medium, it, it's up to 37%. So it's a little bit surprising on the first uh, side that going from low grade in defiling quality to high grade, that that the medium grade is uh, showing worse performance. But this can probably be explained that very often if somebody goes to more aggressive uh, conditions or five years idling, and they don't want to go for, for, for high grade, they go for medium. Um, and if there's low falling pressure, ship owners prefer, or, or in order to save money, they go for, for low grade antifoulings. But this is definitely a proof that uh, the investment into um, better antifoulings has an effect on their performance. Um, we have some uh, barnacle pictures ahead. Um, and as always, it depends on the system of antifouling or what, uh, what you have. So this is an example of a low-grade antifouling um, at copper oxide and cyanide as a copper as algae and slime. Uh, you can see uh, flat bottom and uh, vertical sides. For um, five years in docking, and you can see really there's still antifouling left, so it's not poorly through, but there is um, a significant amount of barnacles, so bigger size and, uh, and smaller size. Now we go to medium grade. Um, this was also our five years uh, in docking with an LNG. On the flat bottom, you can see uh, quite big barnacles, and also here on, 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 on this one. So there was on the vertical and on the bottom a little bit less than 50% was fouled with barnacles. On the vertical side, uh, 3,000 square meter out of 8,000 square meter. If you go then to high grade, in this case, uh, cuprous oxide and copper pyrifilm, uh, uh, algaecide, uh, co-biocide, um, on, on all products tanker, you can see here yeah, around uh, two centimeter big barnacles. On, on the boot top, which uh, is less immersed, uh, it's roughly 50% of, of the area. On the vertical sides, it's also uh, roughly 50% uh, of, uh, of the surface, which is covered with uh, barnacles. And this has 
and a tremendous impact on the performance. It's not only classically anti fouling with uh, polishing, but also um, fouling release products can uh, foul and can get barnacles. So you can see on the vertical side, heavy foul uh, a lot of barnacles. And also here on the vertical side, you can see very big barnacles. So it's a five year stocking um, um, flat bottom is a five side anti fouling. On the, uh, on the vertical side, it's, uh, it's, it's a fouling release. Um, before I talked about uh, niche areas and uh, selected for um, invasive species, and there is definitely in the future uh, a need to protect the, uh, the niche areas, uh, the thrusters, and, uh, um, and and the grading significantly better. So this is a, a picture uh, delivered by Chikoku. Um, they have developed a product. Which is combining cuprous oxide, salic soap, and uh, and copiosite, and this is the same vessel, uh, the same grading, same trading route, um, 15 months and 16 months, and you can see here that this one after the intubbing looks significantly. This is before washing, of course, looks significantly significantly better than uh, than, than the high grade standard anti uh, paint. Of course, I have to admit. Um, very often the gradings and the niche areas do not get the attention in, 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 in the paint application which they deserve and i'm quite sure that uh, here they make sure that the paint is well uh, uh, well applied whereas normally very often you have on the edges uh, no, no paint left and so they start growing on the edges and then they grow in so there will also be in the long run some design changes so i believe uh, one would have to use uh, round uh, bars instead of uh, square ones yeah. Uh, yeah, another case study. Uh, this is a uh, uh, MR tanker, uh, Team Calypso, which uh, has a silicon powered uh, copper free um, paint. You can see here uh, where she's uh, going. So she's quite often in the Caribbean. Here you can see also uh, the idling. So, so they were idling up to 55 days, also here in very warm, aggressive waters, also, also here. And on this one, on this one, there was done um, an ISO 1930. Um, you can see time. Here's the added resistance. Um, here's a dry dock. The, the vessel was full blasted and uh, the silicon containing paint was applied. Here, before, you can see uh, there was already a lot of roughness, fouling, or high roughness uh, from the beginning. Then there was a propeller polishing performance became better. Um, here they did a full hull cleaning, it became significantly better, but the price they had to pay probably was that the, the fouling was taken off. So then the fouling starts very fast and the performance got very bad. Um, and then they did a propeller cleaning and the hull cleaning, and again the performance became better uh, before, the, before the application of the product containing selectrope. And here you can see from 2016 to end of 2019, uh, was almost yeah, there was an increase of performance. So I'm just looking on the upper line, which is the uh, total added resistance. Um, the system they use um, separates hull and uh, and propeller, um, and here you can see that it was roughly 15% um, of added hull and propeller resistance, with only one propeller cleaning after. Tool, yes, and uh, seeing is believing. So here you can see how the, how she looks. You can see on, on wherever there's a draft marks or what is uh, non anti fouling it's getting fouled. You can see um, yeah on, on, on the bell section or where it's grading where it grows uh, on, on the edges, but on the vertical side it looks very good. Here you can also see on on, on, on the flat bottom on, on the block settings uh, it's also fouling. Um, but generally, the flat bottom looks really good. The here you can see also that the that the anodes um, look extremely good. Uh, the anodes are fouled, and the rest of the hull looks really good. So as a summary, um, together with uh, um, well, ITEC commissioned a, a research to Safina, so they looked into uh, the data from 50 vessels um, of the animal and particle fouling, and it, it proved that. Binding fouling is a much bigger problem than stated by uh, by a lot of uh, people in, in the coatings industry. 30% um, roughly have 
finally a coverage of more than 20% of the total underwater hull area. Um, Set bottom and sea chest is a problem for barnacle fouling. Um, sometimes on the set bottoms, uh, uh, ship owners tend to use a more economic product to save uh, money. For the sea chest, uh, there will probably special products be needed in the, in the future. Uh, it has also been shown that uh, better paints generally show a significantly better performance. Um, yeah, but still, there's still a lot of room for improvement. So. I think the numbers show that uh, on a global level, the, the quality of the performance is not as, as it should be if you want to go to uh, or, uh, zero emission and uh, safe on, on, on the fuel. So uh, thank you very much for your, for your time. If you have any questions, feel free to send me a mail and uh, we will do our best to, to answer it. Thank you very much and uh, yeah, wish you a nice time in Hamburg.